right behind me here, my black belly just gave birth. So now all of my sheep, my original sheep have given birth now. So I wanted to take you along for this first day of birth and just show you what that looks like and what I'm doing. And I'll show you my two other new babies that we had two weeks ago as well. Come on, mama. I shone bright in my journey. Oh, what I saw oh it's alive. Oh my gosh. Was back where I began. Good job, Mama. Wow. So the first thing I need to do is just distract these sheep so that they don't follow me because the sheep are going to spend the first two weeks over in this area in the barn. While they're distracted, I can grab these and make mom follow me. So the distraction didn't go as planned. And as I'm moving the babies, what happened with my last ones, they would make a bass sound and the moms would hear that and run towards their baby. But these babies weren't making that sound. And my black belly and black bellies in general, they're more wild sheep, a bit more deer-like. Out of all my sheep, this is the one that still doesn't fully trust me. So I got Koei and the other sheep, moved to the other paddock so I could just work on the black belly. So I'm just barely stepping forward. I'm really using my hands to to make it look as if I'm coming so that she'll just turn. I really want her to see that the gate's open. Right now she thinks her only pathway is to go this way to get out. And what I've learned through all of this is that sheep are not very good visually. They can see movement very easily, but they can't really see definition very well. They are relying on sound and smell more than anything to protect them from predators uh, and to know what's going on in their surroundings. So you gotta give them some time to pick up on visual cues. Okay, let's try backing off. Let's see if that'll get her to turn. Turn around, there it is. Ah, she still didn't see it. There, there it is. She might have seen it. She must have seen it now, yep, she is seeing it. Good girl, yes. There you go. Good girl. Good girl. Get on in. Come on in. There we go. Good. Good. All right. Nothing's as it seems in the photo. Nothing is. So she twinned, unfortunately. I was hoping she was only gonna have a single because you can see how tiny those babies are. But they seem to have some good strength. There's some resilience there. Um, and they're both still alive. So um, I think I have a ton of hope that there's, they're gonna be fine. This is a smaller breed being that it's an American black belly. And I believe she probably got pregnant on her first heat cycle, which I don't really like. I'd, I, with my other sheep, I waited till they were over a year old before they got pregnant and all their babies came out a really good size. That's not necessarily what, what causes the size of the baby, but her milk bag is not as big as the other sheep's too, uh, which also, you know, not as much colostrum and all that for the babies. So we gave her full spectrum minerals, you guys, like I always do. So Redmond sea salt, that is the sea salt that I highly recommend everybody use. This is uh, sea salt that's from America. Uh, and it's from an ancient seabed. So it's not polluted, doesn't have microplastics, and you get 15% off now if you use my code, Nature15. I've been giving Redmond to my animals this entire time. I use garlic sea salt for my sheep, just for extra parasite uh, resistance. I was able to get large uh, 40 or 50 pound bags from my feed supplier. So you might wanna check with them as well if you want larger amounts, uh, but check out their website for all sorts of the best salt. The other minerals I do is diatomaceous earth, kelp meal, and a little bit of azomite as well, which is another um, kind of like salt, but mineral supplement that you can use in your garden as well. For this mama, I'm actually gonna feed a little bit of grain that I'm going to ferment. So I'm fermenting it in um, KNF maintenance solution. So brown rice vinegar, FPJ, uh, I've got seawater in there. I've also got labs in the form of SD Microbes Bokashi that you can get 10% off and buy all of the SD Microbes lineup of nutrients on my website, naturesalwaysright.com. So check that out as well. So that's gonna help to ferment and break down some of the grain. So it's a little bit more easily digestible by a sheep, which isn't really supposed to be eating that. But this is typically what a lot of sheep farmers do to help boost milk production in the beginning. And because these sheep are so small, um, I'd like to see her have a bigger milk bag. She's not an older ewe that is better at producing the milk. 
this sheep I am going to experiment with and feed some grain for the first few days while that colostrum needs to be built to try to give these little guys the best chance that they possibly can to thrive. Um, but typically I'm 100% grass all the time, zero medications all the time. And I try to breed genetics that have those strengths and also have parasite resistance. So my other two babies that came out two weeks ago did really great with this setup. So I'm going to do the same thing again, raise the ewe and her lambs separated, get the mom and the babies together so they can just do their thing and be left alone. I don't need to touch them or mess with them. And then after two weeks, they'll head back out here and I'll go show you the two. So the two new babies right there are 75% St. Croix, 25% Katahdin. Those babies and the babies from my black belly are the final babies from my other ram that died that I believe was killed by that ram right there which he just rammed me for the first time. So he can no longer be trusted. And if uh, you've never been around sheep before, any male animal that has its testes, you never trust them ever. You always keep an eye on that animal. So even though he's, he had never attacked me this entire time, I guess I wasn't keeping my eye on, eye on him since I was filming, but normally I do. It just goes to show you there is no ram you can ever trust, uh, no matter how long you've had it. So I am excited that the my St. Croix ram, some of his genetics will get to live on, and those two boys right there are probably gonna be good enough to be breeding stock for somebody. Now, I could keep those for myself, but the son cannot breed with the mother, so I would have to get rid of that one St. Croix, so I'd, I'd sell that off to somebody as a breeding animal, um, and I could keep him, and he would breed, he could breed with his ants, and that would be okay. So that's a potential thing I could do. Another potential, um, he's gonna breed my Katahdin full bred will uh, breed all these and then that will create 75, 25 babies. I may do that a couple rounds and then I'll switch out this ram, sell him, get a full bred St. Croix um, and breed back. And that's kind of my plan for now at least is to just keep breeding high quality, 100% grass, zero uh, parasite medicated sheep uh, of the St. Croix and Katahdin breeds and just keep crossing them back and forth uh, because the St. Croix and Katahdin, they seem to be the best breeds for the South. Um, they have the best parasite resistance. Uh, Katahdin gives you a little bit more size. Dorper Katahdin is another famous cross, but I don't think that Dorper makes, it, makes as much sense um, for our region just because of the parasite issues. So I still have a, a many more months to make a decision on what I end up wanting to do with these two boys. What I am doing for now is I'm leaving all of my male animals intact up until slaughter two. That way the testicles could be eaten um, or I have the option of selling them as a breeding animal if I like their quality enough because you can make a little bit more money if you just sell the meat but a good quality breeding animal you know I'm trying to get more good genetics out there that's grass fed zero medications which is really difficult to find uh, most places in the US most places are doing everything conventional right but we're trying to do something on a whole nother level um, so I'm just trying to be a participant in that and it's just so much fun and I love learning about all this. So I thought it was pretty interesting that these babies came out white because Katahdin, uh, they can come out pure white, but they can also come out brown, have splotches and different colors. St. Croix is true white. Uh, and then the black belly obviously is all color. So what came out looks to be like it's going to be mostly pure white. Uh, so that St. Croix even though it was only 50% of the genetics really punched through. So that's another thing for me to note as I go on my breeding journey, that that St. Croix, it really has that strong uh, color formation. I actually wanted some different colors, so um, I like that. So we'll see what ends up happening once they get older. The bottom of their feet look all brown, but I think that's just from like amni amniotic fluid, maybe a little bit of mud. So one of them is for sure a boy because I looked. The other one, I'm not so sure, but I'll find out in the next few days. I'll end up tagging their ears you know i've been doing that like in the five to seven day mark somewhere in there is when i have done it and i've been pretty happy with the, the timing of that that's another reason to separate them because it's really easy to grab them and tag them if i can just keep them inside of this and i don't have to deal with the other sheep so i've been really enjoying using this outer paddock which i will put out a bid video build video and plans for this at some point but sure to sign up for my email list below and I'll let you know when any of my extra educational content comes out. Babies and mama are still doing really great. You can see them on the ground right now. They're just sleeping, don't worry. Believe me, I have like five anxiety attacks a day when I look down here and I see, see them laying on the ground, they look like they're dead, but I had to get used to it that they're just always sleeping. 
they look like they're dead, but they're not. The first two, three days I noticed the babies don't really know what predators are looking like. They're not really scared of me at all. They sleep a ton, just drink and just drink milk. That's basically all they do. They will start eating grass in the first few days, which is pretty amazing that the, everything starts to work uh, that quickly. They, uh, as soon as they come out, uh, they stood up within 30 minutes. They were up walking around. So the, the strength that they have is pretty incredible from the beginning. And another quick thing before we go that I have been doing in here to try to minimize my parasite issue is allowing the chickens, I've been feeding chicken feed in here so that the chickens will pick through the manure. And I'm actually, I'll go through and coat the manure with a bunch of seeds. So they pick through it and destroy it all and hopefully eat a bunch of those parasites. They are the parasites that are in chickens and sheep do not cross. so. Um, they're a great way to try to reduce the parasite load here on the ground, and that's what I'm uh, attempting to do with them. 